Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and today we got the TWAB for June 30th. Also tonight we have our podcast, we'll be joined by Ill Physics, Tony, PvP guys, so it should be an interesting podcast with the TWAB that we've got. What I want to do is quickly go over the changes to the TWAB, just kind of looking at the character to actually kind of cover some of these. First one, we've got Airborne Effectiveness. If you haven't heard about this, it is a new kind of stat that's been put in the game. You won't see it on your guns currently. In Season 18, they are going to make that a visible stat, probably amongst other things like Aim Assist and Recoil Direction, things of that nature. Aim Assist buffs are coming to basically all primaries, and they're also giving them to some exotics like Suros, Whisper, Monte Carlo, Foe Tracer. Airborne Effectiveness is supposed to be better on primaries. They still want it to be a challenge on specials. That's kind of a preference thing if you guys like or hate that piece. But Airborne Effectiveness on primaries is supposed to be getting a buff basically across the board. Uh, 180 hand cannons, which I technically have one on me, they are going to be getting a buff in PvP, so they're going to be doing a bit more damage to the body, so I think it's from 37 to 40, so if you do 5 body shots, theoretically that might get a kill. You can also get 2 body, 2 headshots for uh, crits to get kills, because the crits are, I think, going up to 60, so you're going to be able to get 2 head, 2 body kills with 180s. Also, they are specifically getting a hand can, a airborne effectiveness buff as well. So if you are one of the ones who likes to jump in the air, 180s are potentially going to be pretty good. Pellet shotguns. If you've got one of those that you've enjoyed using, say like Without Remorse, the new one, those are getting a 25% PVE damage bonus. It was 10%. It's going up to 25%. So I think they're getting an additional 15% bonus. Linear fusion rifles, which... I enjoy using, uh, many of you guys do, Storm Chaser right now is god tier, and basically the big issue with these generally in PvE is the flinch, it's massive, they did this for PvP so they weren't quite as easy to get those, you know, kind of high aim assist shots off, if you get flinched really hard it was going to be difficult, but in PvE that was an issue, so now linear fusion rifles are going to be much more manageable and tame in PvE, which is a good thing, because if I have my Arbalist out and I'm trying to do damage, I'm going to get my, you know, scope gets thrown halfway across the map, Kind of hurts. So linear fusions are going to be much more effective in PvE. Special ammo bricks are going to be kind of fixed or needed. You've got things like Glaives, Ariana's Vow, you've got Foe Tracer, a couple different things that needed actually to have enough of a special ammo brick drop to get a kill. And it wouldn't because Ariana's Vow won't get a single one shot kill. It will do two. And it was only dropping like one ammo for a Glaive, one ammo for Ariana's. I think three bullets for Foe Tracer, but that was like no room for a body shot. So basically what they've done is kind of given those a little bit of a buffer or given them at least enough to kill. Foe Tracer just got a bit of a buffer for a body shot as well. Uh, Lawrence Driver, when it comes to exotics, we got some changes on these things. So the Lawrence Driver, very oppressive when it comes to PvP. They are nerfing this one. Basically, it's 10 less aim assist, and the suction is going to be less as well on the actual little explodey bomb. So if you're trying to get away in PvP, you should be better. Again, the aim assist flinch, or I said the flinch, I say, is still going to be there in PvP, but Lawrence Driver in PvE should be more manageable as well. But again, 10 less aim assist. This definitely should help make it a little harder to hit some of those shots. Yalahorn's kind of a weird one. Not sure... But basically, right now, as it stands, rounds fired split into tracking cluster missiles. You've got gain increased handling and reload speed when standing near allies. Firing this weapon grants um, wolf pack rounds to nearby allies. You've got short action stock. You've got alloy casing. And you've got volatile launch. Apparently, it also has intrinsic proximity. That is going to be going away. They're trying to make it a little less oppressive in Gambit specifically and also in PvP. Uh, they also say the wolf pack rounds themselves are going to have half the damage to... Um, PvP players. So it's still going to be strong in PvE for DPS. That shouldn't probably change. But in general, uh, PvP, it's going to be less effective. Less proximity at detonation. And then also the wolf pack rounds will be doing less damage. Probably the biggest nerf, which is going to be very much a good thing for some people. Last word, I think more on controller, is having... It's basically stated as 50% of hip fire precision cone angle is going to be... It's a reduction of that. And then the other piece is going to be the range. And if you read it all together, reduced hip fire precision aim angle by 50%. And they say precision aim angle distance, uh, di or I'm sorry, dictates how far off the head you can be aimed and still have aim assist grant you a critical hit instead of a body shot. So it's going to be 50% smaller, much harder to hit those hip fire shots, much less forgiveness. They also reduce the damage and aim assist fall off distance by three meters. So... Uh, it's three meters shorter when those things start to get worse. So last word should be less oppressive. 
especially on con for controller users. If you guys are on controller, you're gonna have to see if you can still do what you used to be able to do, but it's been a thing for a long time. I've seen a lot of raves and happy people about this on Twitter, so depending on your thoughts, maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing, but it is definitely getting nerfed. That's most of it. Uh, next week, we have Grandmasters coming back. So those will be kicking off on the 5th on Tuesday. So they're going to go back through similar rotations. So those will be kicking off. So get ready for those. Uh, I did a video over the arms dealer. So when this thing comes around in probably about six weeks, if you are looking to do any Grandmasters, the arms dealer is one that I've even soloed and I've done very few of these things. Um, so gr the arms dealer is one of those to watch out for late in the season when it comes back in about six and a half weeks because it is one of those that's very doable, very farmable. And also when you get the things like the acute burns, it helps you do damage and kind of nuke the boss. So look forward to that one. But again, Grandmasters are coming. And then the week after, which will be July 12th, we will have Iron Banner coming back for the second and only other time that you're going to have Iron Banner this season. Uh, again, that will be Rift. If you're looking for Iron Lord, you'll need to grind that one out. But that's basically it. Still a relatively shorter TWAB. Uh, the Prime Gaming, if you're looking for your Prime Gaming drops for emotes and ghosts and sparrows make sure you go pick that one up and then they've also got their updates for a couple other known issues and things like that but that is basically the twab for june 30th as i said podcast tonight 7 p.m right here on youtube if you enjoyed the video drop a like if you want to find me on twitter twitch it's ebontis right there or if you enjoy the content please subscribe hit that alert bell so my videos make it to you a bit easier and other than that see you guys soon thank you youtube members and patreon subs all of you guys are awesome have a good weekend